Choices are back in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, as you likely know, and I was able to play the recent Lettuce of Shire demo two times and make different choices to see what would change. But what I noticed is that it's not only about the different dialogue options you select, but also about the actions you do. What is the order of missions you complete? Do you kill someone you encounter or do you skip them so you can maybe encounter them later on? It could also have an impact on the roaming boss in the game and when I found that out, I was like, wow, this is awesome. So, I want to go over everything I learned about these systems in this video. A like would really help the channel out and let's go. But first up, the sponsor of this video, Surfshark, my go-to VPN that helps you with online safety so no one can see your IP address, private messages, passwords and other sensitive data. And it's nice that it works on all your devices, you can use it actually on as many devices as you want, including your computer. And as you might know, I like to use the Google Chrome extension to quickly connect to different locations, to then get access to content that wasn't available to watch before due to geo restrictions like on Netflix or on YouTube. Maybe you remember that IGN series we talked about before in a previous Valhalla video that showcased a ton of the new gameplay. Well, seems like they made it unavailable for people to watch outside of the US, but by simply using the VPN, I can suddenly watch it. So totally check Surfshark out, find the link in the video description. As a viewer of my channel, you get 83% off and 3 extra months for free. So again, totally check the special link in the video description for this offer. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring the video it really helps the channel out and now let's get back into it let's start with Tona the Ragnar sons are not really fond of her as you maybe already saw in one of the cutscenes but she has a camp in Lannister Shire and some information about the missing King Burgred so Sigurd and Eivor go and talk with her to try and get that information. And the first choice we get is to actually pay for that info, 520 silver, which is quite a lot, or you can have it if you have Charisma on level 2. And Charisma level 2 is something you can actually already get after your first flighting battle against Elvis in your settlement. He kind of teaches you the ropes of flighting, how you should react so that you can be successful when you encounter challengers out in the world. In Repton I found another flighting opponent and here you can actually place a bet and then get double the amount of money if you win. So I think it's totally smart to go for the big bet, so the 200 silver, because if you got the tactic down, it should not be that hard to choose the best option out of the tree. And apart from the money, you will be doing this for the charisma. This is the only way to upgrade your charisma and that will then open up extra dialogue choices throughout the game. So again, while one flighting match gets you to charisma 2, it will take more flighting matches for each each level but for the small time investment I think it's totally worth it to do them when you find them in this case though we still don't want to pay her and infiltrate her camp instead I'm not sure why you would ever pay because if you skip this camp you would actually miss some pretty cool gear items and an ability for the main story now we want to find that information that she would have sold us otherwise but the thing is that Tona will also be walking around in the camp and you can encounter her and then it simply turns into a fight where you'll have to kill her. So that is what happened during my first play session. I took her out, got the information, left the camp and then we'll meet up with Ivar, Uba and also Sigurd. And Ivar is curious about what happened. And what do we do with Tona? I would bet the sweat off my sack she's writing to Borgred now offering silver for a warning about us. You won't be seeing her again, not unless you're bound for Helheim. I'll collect now if you don't mind. Ah. This one takes after me, brother. In my second playthrough, I was more careful and got the information without running into her. So I did not kill her and she would still be like walking around. So then when you meet up with the Ragnar sons, you actually say, let me worry about it. I did not encounter her anymore during my play session, but I learned from an interview that she should actually make an appearance in your settlement then. So high chance that my settlement and your settlement will likely have different characters at the end of the game, depending on who you spared and who you killed. If you killed Tona, she will obviously not appear in your settlement, while if you did not take her out, she might be there. Before I touch on a very interesting choice that also has an impact on the roaming bosses, I first want to show you something else. Because now after this Tona camp mission, 
I could go to two different main quest objectives. And the order you choose will also have a slight impact on the dialogue. If you meet up with Ivar first, you go look for the king in Lettichester. And you do this by searching two buildings, a church and an old bathhouse. And here your choice kind of matters as well. Because if you go to the bathhouse first, you will immediately find Chilbert, the son of the king that the brothers of Ragnar want to get on the throne. So then the church as an objective disappears. If you go to the church first, you will actually find a bow here and can then go to the bathhouse. Don't worry, you can still go to the church without having the main story objective and then still get the bow. But if you really just focus the main quest marker, you would have missed it if you went to the bathhouse immediately. And the cool thing is that you will then mention what you did in Lettichester to Uba and Sigurd who are waiting for you on that other main quest objective. But if you do their main quest objective first and then go to Ivar, they will mention to Ivar what you did at the castle. A dialogue you will otherwise of course not have. So this will especially be fun in something like New Game Plus to see the story from multiple sides. It's not yet confirmed, but I would bet that it comes one day. Did you see Uba and Sigurd in Templarbrach? Burkrit's wife was hiding there. Uba's taken her back to Tamworth. Something wrong. My brother, that's what. And yeah, things are kind of heating up between Ivar and Uba. Ivar doesn't like how soft his brother has become. And you can likely somehow intervene and maybe choose sides in this relationship. In this Lattice story arc, you can just follow along with some of the crazy things that Ivar is doing. But you could also be kind of hostile towards him. In this play session, it did not really matter. You will still grab a drink with him at the end after most of the mission is over. But I totally think that it might have an impact when you run up to these brothers of Ragnar again. As always, I want to stress that I'm discussing like a super small part of the game here that Ubisoft chose to show. It's one region out of many in England and we also have like Norway and some mythical realms to explore. There's one choice that happens at the end of this story arc. You might see it as a spoiler. I think it's really a minor one and knowing what will actually happen will help you out a lot when the game launches. And I will not even talk about the big reveal in that cutscene as well, just a choice that again has an impact on the roaming bosses. You namely got the choice to spare or kill Leofrit, so killing him will actually not bring you a lot. He might deserve it in your eyes, but I don't think it will be the smart decision in this instance. If you namely let him live, he will tell you about a statue in Venonis. You can find a scroll there with your name on it as a request from the king and this for the zealots, the roaming bosses who will then read the scroll and go and hunt you. I did not have time to do this myself, but we do have footage of this from Access the Animus, and I will leave a link to their video in the video description, where we see Eivor burn the scroll and then the red text on screen, saying that the Zealot Warriors will not actively hunt you, so then when they are nearby, they will simply not engage. They will only fight back when you start the encounter. So this will give you a huge advantage. Because of course in the end we want to take them out for the rewards. As I said in the intro when I learned about this I was like whoa that is awesome. And I'm sure there will be many of these secrets in the final game. Again what we just talked about is just one story arc. There are many more. Subscribe for everything on the Creed Valhalla if you haven't already. A like on the video would really help the channel out. And don't check out other in-depth videos on the channel if you haven't already. Or go to my second channel, Raptor Roll, where I'm posting a ton of raw gameplay from my Valhalla play session. Would be awesome if you could go there, subscribe, click on the screen to do so. And enjoy all the gameplay. We're super close to launch. I can't wait. For now, I will speak to you next time and goodbye.